What's up everyone, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and I've got another roundup for you. If you saw last week's roundup, you knew I was in Israel, visiting with some of the engineering teams that are out there, and getting back home was a little bit of an adventure. I live in the North Houston area, and unless you've been living under a rock, you've heard about the Hurricane Harvey and flooding and everything in the Houston area. That's what made it hard. I did make it home and my family is safe and sound. There was no flooding in my actual house, but check out some of the flooding that was in my nearby area as I drove around. There are a lot of people that are still struggling and there are still rescues going on and just a lot of people that are way worse off than I am. But if you feel inclined to help and want to donate, then I've got some links down in the description below where you can go ahead and do that. All right, enough of that. Let's dig into the roundup. First up is a blog post from Brian Grant. He's actually got a video, talks about context transitions inside of DAX and Power BI. And this is a concept that I've told a lot of people that is very hard to wrap your head around. But once you do, it makes DAX so much easier. So this has to do with evaluation context, row context, filter context. These are things that you should learn about and understand if you're gonna be using DAX syntax inside of Power BI or inside of Analysis Services Tabular or Excel. These are things that you need to wrap your head around. They're hard. So Brian approaches this in a very visual way inside of a report. So if this is something that you're still struggling with or you wanna learn a little bit more about, Check out this blog slash video, and hopefully this will help you. Next up is a video from Ruth Pozuelo, where she looks at multi-language support inside of Power BI reports. I get asked this a ton. Everyone kind of asks like, do we support multiple languages inside of Power BI? And the answer is not natively, but there are ways that you can go about doing it. And Ruth really takes a look in her video on how you can go about doing this. So I definitely wanted to share this out because I think a lot of people would benefit from it and understand what are the options that you can actually do with this. The big thing to understand is you have to account for the translations yourself. They have to be in your model. This is not something that Power BI is gonna automatically translate items for you inside of your report. So there is some work you have to do to get this done. But if this is something that you're very interested in and you need to get done inside of your report for business reasons, Ruth's got you covered. So go ahead and check that out. Back in June, we released usage metrics for reports and dashboards. And there's an update now where you can actually get per user usage metrics. So we can actually tell now individual users who's actually hitting my reports and dashboards. That's very cool. So this blog post goes through and shows you what this looks like, how to go use it. And so these are ways that you can go inspect and see who in your organization's actually viewing and using your reports or who's not looking at your report. So if this is something you're interested in, be sure to check out this blog post. The interactive timeline visual is something that was shown off at Data Insight Summit and everyone wanted to get their hands on it. Now it's available in the Office Store, so you can go ahead and download it, integrate it into your reports, and start using it and coming up with really cool stories around timelines. So if you want more details, check out this blog post. There's some example reports inside of it, and you can go ahead and get started today. The August 2017 preview for Power BI Report Server is available for you to go download. And this preview has what everyone's been asking for, and that is other data sources outside of Analysis Services Live Connections. You can now use imported data as part of Power BI Desktop inside of Power BI Report Server. So that pretty much opens up all data sources for you. So that's exciting. A couple things to realize about this release. First off, it is a preview, so it's not done. There's still work going on in it. You do need to have the Power BI Desktop optimized for Power BI Report Server for the preview downloaded. That can't be installed on the same machine as your Power BI desktop for the GA version of Power BI Report Server. So there is a different Power BI desktop that you do have to install and use to take advantage of this feature. Also be aware that you're limited to a 50 megabyte size of your PBIX file. So it's not the one gig that you're used to in the service. So just be mindful of that when you're playing with data and importing data into Power BI desktop. And I'll have links for all of that down in the description below, along with everything else that I've talked about, including some bonus links for you. If you are trying to copy M syntax from Power BI Desktop or Excel into Analysis Services Tabular with the new 1400 model, 
this blog post is for you. You've got to read it. It talks about how do you transition between the two and how data source and credentials and all of those items work inside of this. So this is a great blog post with tons of detail of how items work, how they look, and how to accommodate those inside of your models. So definitely check out this blog post if you are going from Power BI Desktop into Analysis Services Tabular with the new 1400 model. You will not regret it. All right, what was your favorite item from this week's roundup? Go and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. For me, the multi-language support is very cool. I know a lot of people have been struggling with that and have wanted to know about it. Also, importing data in using imported data inside a Power BI report server is something a lot of people have been asking for. So yay, that's now available to use from a preview standpoint. But let me know what you think. Leave that down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great videos from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.